so we have been going through um, just every, every month we do one. So for you who have never been here, BZ Principles, the whole goal of this is timely and timeless topics that will allow us to engage in conversation. Um, these are not just presentations, but they're more of the ideas like how do we bring a topic up that is relevant, which would be timely, but it's also timeless. So something that you can use no matter if you're your age or if you're my age, okay? So that's, that's the goal of these. So this year, we've been going through the, the concept, sorry, the clicker's not on. We've been going through the concept of resolute. And if you look at the idea of resolute, you remember our world needs you to be resolute. If you look at anything in the news, the world around us needs people who are resolute. So what do we mean by resolute? Well, first of all, before we get into that, I need to explain to you kind of our methodology and what we're looking for and how you live or how you approach every situation in life and what it means bravo zulu so for me i grew up in a military family my dad was in the air force my father-in-law flew uh, fighter jets for the navy um so and i worked for a guy here at cedarville who were, was in the navy so i've heard this terminology bravo zulu which if you've ever been in a navy community it's they are nautical flags and they mean well done so in the world basically what happened in the 40s they needed a way to communicate they didn't have these things called cell phones and you know, nice radio, so they would fly flags. And if they fly the Bravo flag and the Zulu flag, it means extremely well done. So my father-in-law would say that when they would fly those flags after a sortie or after a mission, that meant that they did extremely well. Not that they just accomplished their mission, they went above and beyond in their mission. So if you're going to be that kind of person, if you're going to be the person that puts the beauty of Christ on display, Matthew 5, 16, so let your light so shine so that others can see your good works, they can see it, and they can give glory to God, you've got to do these two things. You've got to be willing to provide extraordinary effort. You can't control the results. If you think you can control the results, you're going to be frustrated the rest of your life. You cannot control the results, but you can control the effort that you put in. And you cannot be perfect, so you strive for excellence. You strive to do the very best. So when you come in and say that you're doing ops and you're laying down wires, you're laying down wires to the best of your ability. If you're making coffee, you're making coffee to the best of your ability. If you graduate, which all of you will, yes, you will. It might not seem that way now, but you will graduate, and you graduate, and you become a nurse. You, are a, you do the things on the floor. You make your rounds to the best. You strive for excellence in that. And in order to do that, you've got to have the proper perspective. And so one of the things that we've been talking about is this idea of resolute. Resolute is this. It's the process of purposeful action. So it's a process, and it's purposeful, and there's action to it. Our world needs you to be resolute. Look at the news with Ukraine. Look at the news with organizations in Florida that I kind of like and what is going on with them in Florida. Look at the, the news and how churches are responding to situations. There has never been more of a time that the world would need you to be resolute, to have that purposeful action, to understand that, hey, I know what I believe. I'm going to believe what I believe. I'm going to lead with conviction, and here's how I'm going to do it. But guess what? Your families need you to be resolute. If you think that every situation in your family life is going to be perfect, you're setting yourself up for failure. Your family needs to be resolute. Your employers need you to be resolute. Your employees, when you own a business one day or run a business one day, need you to be resolute. Your churches need you to be resolute. I know there are several pastor's kids in this room. My dad was a pastor for 40 years. One of the things my dad loved about his churches is that the fact that he had people that he knew he could count on no matter what, even if he made a mistake. So churches need you to be resolute. Your communities need you to be resolute. So we've been talking about this. So I want to give you a summary of this. So if you've been with us the other eight times, this is going to be like, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. If you've never been with us, well, guess what? You're going to learn what we talked about in Resolute. So let's just jump right in and we're going to start. So for me, 
I took the word resolute, I broke it down by each letter, and I came up with something that could identify what it means to have a process of purposeful action. These are all, we're going to give you this video when we're done. These are all in notes that we will give you on our, the Bravo Zulu, uh, the Google website. We've got that there for you for BZ Principles, so you can see it. So don't feel like you got to like take notes like crazy or try to remember everything. You can't. You're going to get something out of today that you're going to be like, okay, I can do that. It won't be everything. So just listen with open, open hearts and with ears just to be able to hear what God might be do, teaching you this morning. So first and foremost, so when you look at resolute, you need to be a person of conviction. You need to be a person of conviction, meaning you can be dependable and reliable. So if you're going to be resolute, you're going to be firm, you better have conviction. If you walk into a situation and you don't know what you believe, if you walk into a job and you do not know what you stand for, if you walk into a relationship and you do not know exactly what your definition of marriage is, then you're going to have problems. So you've got to have convictions. I also think that when you're, when you're resolute, you're dependable, you're reliable, and you're consistent. So think about the most dependable person in your life. They're pretty consistent, aren't they? What you see is what you get. You don't get like one day is they're up here and the next day they're down here. The next day they're all over the map. You get somebody, that's somebody that's resolute. So you've got conviction, you're dependable, you're reliable. So after you've got that, you've got to go to the next word, which is empathy. And a lot of people might think, well, Brian, why in the heck are you talking about empathy when you're talking about being strong? Because I believe, and I wrote two things down, to be resolute, you need, to, you need empathy. To be resolute without empathy is selfish now let me break this down a little bit if i'm going to be resolute i've got to be aware of the people around me i think what the opportunity that god has given us in this world right now with what is going on socially is we can have conviction about truth that's in scripture but we can also view people as created image bearers of god sometimes we go into situations like i believe this great so do i but you just ran over that person that person that person that person and that person and now nobody wants to listen to you right you need empathy and a couple things with empathy: be aware of others get to know them um, i think it's important that you get to know how they how they think who they are so like I've told the story before of my time when I was down at a class in Florida. I was down there, I was with a, with a huge group, and there was a guy that was in our group that was gay. And I, we went around and we told what we did, and I said, yeah, I work at a university. He's like, hey, what university? I work at a university in Ohio. Well, what kind of university is it? It's a Christian university. He's like, it's no lie. This is what he looked at me and said. Is, well, then I guess we can't be friends now because you disagree with what I believe. I said, well, yeah, I disagree with what you believe, but you are created in the image of God. That's one thing. And yes, I can be your friend. It blew that dude away. But that's what empathy was. If I didn't know what I believed, and all of a sudden he says, I'm gay, and all of a sudden I go back into the cave and go, oh my goodness, I'm not supposed to be around anybody like that. Right? So I had empathy. I got to know that person. You got to seek to understand. Now, let me tell you, in seeking to understand doesn't mean that you conform. Your generation wants to love people, get to know people. I love that. But it doesn't mean conform because you understand them. It means you just understand them so you know how to relate to them. So if you're going to be resolute, you've got to have conviction. You've got to have empathy. And then the next one is you've got to be willing to solve problems and find solutions. Winston Churchill said this in the midst of the worst part of World War II. Don't waste a good crisis. I think, you know, being, London being bombed, he's looking at him and say, hey, let's not waste a good crisis. Albert Einstein says the greatest things that you can learn are usually in the middle of crises. So in situations, to be resolute, you don't look at a problem and go, my life is just ended. I just got a C on a test. You got a C on a test, congratulations, that was probably my high grade. But the whole idea is I just got a C on this test, or this guy just broke up with me, or this girl just broke up with me, or this family situation is going on right now. I think you've got to realize there is always a solution in every situation. There's always a solution in every situation. And guess what? The world's not always bad. 
I think not only do you have to find solutions, you've got to find opportunities to grow things. Status quo is something you don't want to do. If you've ever played sports or if you've ever been involved in music, you've ever been involved in theater, if you never get better, then you're really no good. And I don't mean that like you're no good. I'm just saying if you're not getting better as an athlete, as a performer, as a musician, there's a problem. Same thing in work. You've always got to do that 1%. What can I do to get better every day? So you're looking to find solutions. You're looking to solve problems and find solutions. So conviction, empathy, you're looking at situations and not going, oh my goodness, I don't know what to do. No, you're actively engaging in finding those solutions and solving those problems. And then after you do that, one of the things you've got to be willing to do is you've got to be willing to change. Because guess what? The, life will, the world will never stay the same. Look at gas prices. I'm serious. A year ago, Chick-fil-A's here. So a year ago, is Jesse just made a face. But a year ago, I could fill up my tank for like 40 bucks. Now it's like 80 bucks. The world's going to change. Your situations are going to change. You're going to graduate one day, and you're going to be in a different situation. You're going to go from being a freshman to a sophomore, from a sophomore to a junior, from a senior to a super senior, super senior to, yeah, whatever. So you're going to do all these things, and life changes. And I think a lot of times we're afraid of change. Growth requires change. Think about that. You can't grow if you don't change. If you're always willing to sit back, and that goes back to willing to solve problems and find solutions, if you're not willing to do this and not just going to be back and I'm always going to stay the same, there's a problem. You've got to be open to change. There will be the opportunity that you go into your first job and you think you know everything about management. And you get to that first job and you're like, well, this is the way it is and you're not willing to change. You've got problems with your employer. Let me flip it around. I've got to be open to change because there are things that I don't know that you all teach me when it's in dealing with either Renova, events, whatever. I've got to be open to change to listen to what you have to say so that I'm willing to move forward and do things. So not only are, do you have, you're strong and have convictions, you have empathy, you're willing to solve problems, you've got to be open to change. You've got to look for blind spots. How many of you drive? What was one of the first things your, your dad probably told your mom is like, hey, check your blind spot? You know, I've, I've wrecked a lot of cars by not checking my blind spot. Don't be afraid. You can drive me now. It's okay. I'm a better driver. Um, the, the whole idea is you look for those blind spots because each of you have them. Either it's a parent saying, you're really good at that, and you're really not good at that. Um, or it's somebody that's just never been, you haven't had the friends around you with the courage to say, look, you've got this weakness Let's talk about that. We all have blind spots. Don't be afraid of them. Don't beat yourself off on them. But know them. If you're going to be resolute, if you're going to be strong, you got to know where you are weak. I think I, if you were here at the last BZ Principles, I shattered my iPad about five minutes before it was going to start. So all my notes were like crinkly, like I couldn't see it. But I shattered it. I mean, I know for me when things go wrong like that, a blind spot of me is I want to destroy things at that point. But understanding that blind spot, I could take a moment, I could step away, and I was able to be resolute in my actions because I knew my own weaknesses. You're not going to be perfect. You've got to know your weaknesses. You've got to accept those weaknesses. It doesn't mean you go, well, good, I'm always going to be a, an angry person. No, you know that you're an angry person. You get better at that. You work at that. You put people around you. You know situations that can help you from getting to that point. So you've got to look for blind spots. You're unwilling to compromise the important. The important is greater than the urgent. Think about that. The important is greater than the urgent. But what do we do in life? We allow the urgent to crowd or to overpower the important. Maybe it's because we didn't take the time to plan out our schedules. Maybe it's because we put too much in our schedules. But you have to be, if you're going to be resolute, you have to be unwilling to compromise the important. So for me, Danielle, Keegan, Audrey, and Ethan. And then the rest of my family somewhere in there. But the rest of that, they are the important. So there will be times, you, you do not know this about my wife, probably some of you, but she cannot drive. She has a legally eye disease that she has no central vision at all. So she cannot drive. So if Danielle calls and says, hey, I need to be taken somewhere, guess what? We might be meeting, but I'm going, peace out, see you later. I got to go take care of my family. 
She needs to know and you need to know that I am resolute because I'm unwilling to compromise what's important. It might be urgent that the sound system in this room is blowing up. I'm leaving. And that's what makes some people resolute. And sometimes that does hurt potentially a job, maybe another relationship, but you've got to be unwilling to compromise the important. So there will be things that you will be asked to do in your life. Think of the COVID situation, and we're not going to get into the debate on shot, no shot, whatever. There are going to be things that you ask to do in your life that you have conviction about, but you're so afraid of the urgent that it's louder than the important. The important is always greater than the urgent. Total commitment. So yeah, you're like, my, why, why is it taking so long to get to total commitment? Well, T is longer, is later in resolute, guys. Come on. So total commitment is a big, big, big part of being resolute. And what I mean by total commitment is not blind loyalty, but it's the idea that you are aware of what somebody is asking you to do. I am aware of what John Wood is asking me to do in my job. I'm going to try it, even though I don't understand it. So that's buy-in. And then I'm going to take ownership and make what John has asked me to do my priority. So total commitment is not this, well, I don't really like Josh, so I'm not going to really try. I really like you, Josh. But I'm not going to really like Josh, but I'm really going to just try to be his friend. No, it's the idea that, man, Josh is a teammate. Total commitment is I'm going to take the good, the bad, and he's not ugly, but the good, the bad, and the ugly, okay? I'm going to take all of that. That's total commitment. But we live in a world right now where it's like, I'll be committed when it's comfortable, when it's convenient. But when the world over here is making fun of Josh, I'm going to go with that because, you know, that's cool. Total commitment is having awareness. It's trying. The first thing you always need to do, people think, well, I'm going to be totally committed, committed and I'm just going to jump in. Total commitment requires that middle step of buy-in. You're going to try it. It takes time to try it. It's like new food. You don't sit down with new food in front of you and you're like, well, I'm going to love this. Now you try it. You don't take a big bite. Well, maybe you do. I take a little bite to see if I'm even going to like it. And then I've got that complete ownership like, yep, I really like steak. Okay. And the last one, you, after you've done all of these, it's not enough just to go, okay, I've, I've been resolute. I've got empathy. I could solve problems. You know, I've, I've got all these other things in there. You've got to be willing to evaluate and say, okay, God, what did I miss? And what's next? Because if we look at every situation with a what's next mindset, we're looking to the future. We're looking to where God is directing us. But a lot of times we look back at our successes. And I'm not saying we don't celebrate our successes. But as a resolute individual, you're looking at what God's got for you down the road. And you've got your eyes fixed on him. So to be resolute, you're really being that Psalms 1 kind of person. You're that tree that's planted by the streams. You're that tree that's producing fruit, not because of who you are, but because of whose you are. So when you're trying to be resolute and you're in a world that's like, I don't want to believe that, that Christians are okay, or I'm living in a world where now we don't even know what the proper definition of a family is. I want to live in a world where we're going to talk about sexual orientation all early in a kid's life. I want to live in a world that's always about war and this and this. You need to be resolute. Not a jerk, because that's what the empathy word is there for, but you need to be strong in what you believe and who you believe in so that you can go do your job well. And then when the situation happens that people need somebody, they can count on you. So to wrap it up in the story I've told before is I have a friend that works in Florida at Disney. And she went through, when Disney let go of 28,000 people, she was one of the people that got laid off. Guess what? They weren't calling their managers and their owners, other people, about getting support and encouragement. They were calling Kristen. And the reason they were calling Kristen was not because Kristen was there every day with her Bible sitting on the table condemning everything that Disney has done wrong, which it's a lot. But it's because Kristen showed up every day and she lived out her values. She worked hard. She provided an extraordinary effort. She strove for excellence. So when the world fell apart, they called her. That's what I want for you. That's what it means to be resolute.